No, I think that in a previous podcast today with Ben Bickman, we talked about this concept of insulin induced insulin resistance. And it's something that, that, that I, it's a term that you coined or someone else coined. I certainly didn't coin the oh, term, but the theory, at least as, as I understood it when I was discussing it with Ben was that, Hey, if you are eating, you could create insulin and maybe we could mimic this situation in a human, not by giving them exogenous insulin, but we could do that if someone is type one diabetic and taking insulin all the time. But um, we could also mimic this by having somebody have uh, Cheetos all the time, yeah. <laughs> right? If you have high insulin producing foods all the time and you're never fasting, you're never having low insulin, it does appear that your cells can become insulin resistant. Now, Ben Bickman and I had a little bit of a friendly debate about what the major driver of metabolic dysfunction was in humans. I think it's more likely to be polyunsaturated fats. I do think there are a lot of people out there who basically eat so many carbs all day long that they could have insulin induced insulin resistance. But you would, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, or I'll, I'll ask you what your perspective is, but I think you would really have to be eating sugar and candy nearly 24 hours a day they, as a the, human to get this. The, the models that do it use exogenous insulin as would a type one diabetic. And because you can never get your level of control Good enough, unless you're on ketogenic diet. There's the different matter there, uh, as a type one diabetic. But you can never get your control good enough that your body gets a break from the uh, insulin signaling. It's right. there all the time, whether you've eaten or not. Um, uh, and uh, th yeah, whether that ever happens um, in real life, just by snacking through the night on carbs, I, I think it, the, 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 it it's open on that one. Um, I, and again, I, I think on a longer term basis, it's it's probably the um, uh, the, the, the background that the initial problem is probably the polyunsaturates. Um, uh, as you well aware, there are there are there are extremely fascinating models showing that sucrose is a massively health food in 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 certain rat, rat and mouse models. It, it, it keeps them skinny, keeps them insulin sensitive. Um, uh, makes them generate a ton of heat. So you, you have to have all these things kind of at the back of your mind. And that, that's another whole ballpark. I won't go into it. But, but uh, uh, essentially, the, the, I, I don't, it will be quite hard to have continuous input generating physiological insulin resistance all the time. Uh, I, I think at some point you should stop eating. Um, and if you can't stop eating, it's probably because you're on polyunsaturated fats. So, and you have, to, you have to sleep at some point. And Ultimately, at a high level, this is the argument um, that that you know the friendly discussion slash argument that I've had with other in the community, which is that I don't believe carbohydrates create metabolic dysfunction per se. Um, certainly, excess fructose and sugars are not a great thing for humans. And you and I both agree that ketogenic diets super super helpful for people, especially if you have type one diabetes or even type two diabetes. Ketogenic low carb diets very very helpful for a lot of reasons. But my perspective is that the problem yeah it sidesteps the problem that, that that's what it does yeah. it incredibly well but say it not, again it does it incredibly well but i don't think it's the core cause i don't think i, I exactly I think right it's not that and driven i don't want to think it's fat <laughs> but right. it's sort of fat okay um right but just to clarify what we're basically what we're, i think what we're both agreeing on here is that type 2 diabetes Removing carbohydrates sidesteps the problem, but it probably was polyunsaturated fats that caused the problem in the first place. And this is just to say that if you have type two diabetes, definitely do a low carb diet. If you have type one diabetes, definitely do a low carb diet. But if you are a metabolically healthy individual, you can include some carbohydrates in your diet if you choose to and not get diabetes, presuming that you, the really important thing to do is to avoid the polyunsaturated fats at an evolutionarily inconsistent level. Would you agree with that? I, I would absolutely go with that. that. I have been driven to that. Um, this is not, I, I, you, you realize I came at this purely as a low carber. Right. And I've been driven to that, that I accept that if you had um, real starches and real fats, that you could probably eat any macro. Once you're broken, that's a different matter. Exactly ever get back to being fully normal is a very interesting question. Um, and it's not an easy one to answer. So, uh, but, but no, I've been driven and, and I still eat fully low carb. I, I'm currently ketogenic. Um, and, but I'm driven to accept that that, that is almost certainly the way it works, that, that, that 
carbs per se uh, are not the problem. It's what you do in terms of insulin signaling from those carbs. Um, and if you resist them, you're fine because you're eating saturated fat. If you respond to them inappropriately and store more fat, then you've lost the fat into your adipocytes, you're still hungry. Okay. Exactly, which is the right. big problem.